Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Tehillim Treasures, where we will plumb the beautiful depths and treasures of Tehillim from the very beginning of Tehillim to the end of David Amel's masterpiece. This episode is brought to you by Chazak. Chazak is an organization that helps public school children become Shemri Tairu Mitzvahs, exposes them to the beauty of Tairu Mitzvahs. Imagine for a moment you're standing in a store or you're walking down the street. You know the neighbor. You've known them for many years. You see their children riding their bike in the driveway. And you know they're Jewish. But now there's someone who can help them take the next step. And that is Chazak with countless programs after school and other wonderful programs to help expose them to the beauty of Yiddishkeit. If you know someone or know someone that knows someone, that can help these children, then please email at psty at chazak.org. This episode is also brought to you by Chickens for Shabbos. Chickens for Shabbos is exactly what it says it is, plus more. There are many people, there are Melamdim's children, there are Agunis, there are Grushis. There are families that do not have simple essentials for Shabbos and for life. Whatever they need, Chickens for Shabbos is there to provide. Please do your utmost to help in any way you can. We continue with the next two chapters of Tehillim, chapter 133 and 134, Kuflamid Gimel and Kuflamid Dalid. In our journey, as we near the end of Sefer Tehillim, this beautiful series of Tehillim treasures. Shira Malay's Ledavid. He named Gam Yochad. One of the nicest, most beautiful psukim in all of Tehillim. Behold, how good and how pleasant is the dwelling of brothers. To have brothers together, nothing more beautiful. Which brothers? All of us are brothers. Here we are for the last six months, davening for each other. For Achenu Kolbeis Yisrael, Mamish brothers. How beautiful it is. Let's be honest, the last few months is tragic and as disappointing and as heartbreaking as it's been to see Klal Yisrael in such pain and such suffering. But there's been such beautiful achtos. And it's hard to imagine how HaKadosh Baruch Hu must get so much nachas. It's so beautiful to see my children, these brothers, unified. But unfortunately, sometimes we become fragmented. And even over the last few weeks, we become more and more fragmented. Some of those ugly issues have reared their ugly head as the war drags on and some of these issues have not gone away. But we dive in and we hope and we pray that we'll be able to be ma'achet, we'll be able to unify ourselves again. Because the Goyim know, the Goyim's strength lies in Klal Yisrael's fragmentation. When we are lacking achdus, when we are lacking unity, we have no strength. When we're together, we have all the strength in the world. You know, I heard a beautiful shot it says that oh. when Moshe Rabbeinu's hands were raised, Klal Yisrael was victorious in battle. Okay. And when they were lowered, Klal Yisrael was defeated in battle. Now, v'chiyadav shal Moshe oisais milchama oishayvrais milchama Do the hands of Moshe wage war or lose the war? Elalei melach shekol zman shal Yisrael mistaklin klape mala As long as we looked towards heaven, we were victorious, and if not, then we lost. But I heard a beautiful shot. Simply understood, it means that we put our faith in God. And of course, that is ultimately where the Yeshua will find itself. If only the Klal Yisrael, all of Klal Yisrael, and Eretz Yisrael will put their faith in the hands of Hashem, will be victorious. But you know, why did Moshe's hands have to be raised? They were held up by Aaron and Hur. Why did they have to be held up? They were heavy. So, Perhaps the shot is that 
When Moshe's hands were raised, that means that fellow Jews were lifting each other's heavy burdens. And when we are able to lift each other's burdens, then our Yeshua comes. But if, when we see our brothers, and they're heavy-hearted, and they're not able to lift their heads, and to lift their hearts and hands towards heaven, then we have no chance to win. But as long as we lift each other, as long as we hold each other up, then we will be victorious. Look, Haman understood that the Jewish people are easily defeated. You know how? There is a nation that is scattered and separate amongst the nations of the world. And the Satmar Rebbe says, when we're mefuzar and mefurad, when we are separate and scattered, when we are not united, Haman says, it's easy street for me. That's when I'm able to defeat the Jewish people. But when Klal Yisrael, Nik Halu HaYehudim, when the Jewish people were able to join together, to gather together, to unite, and put all of our differences aside, all of the things that threatened to break us apart, put them all aside, just like we did after October 7th. When we're able to do that, there's nothing that will stop us. You know, it's no secret. There's many different tashkafas, many different schools of thought amongst the Jewish people, amongst the religious people. And sometimes we allow that pettiness to get in the way. Recently, Rabbi Judah Michel, a good friend, told me a story, and I put it in the introduction to my latest book called Now That's a Story. And the story was a beautiful story. He told me that he lives in Ramat Beit Shemesh, and there was a couple of yeshiva bachim who were walking by the house right before Shabbos. And he sees that these yeshiva bachim are like eyeing the house, and finally one of them comes knocking on the door. And he walks in, and he says, did you live here like 10 years ago? You had an Israeli flag out? He says, yeah, we've lived here for more than 10 years, sure. And he starts crying uncontrollably. Uncontrollably. He says, what's wrong? He says, I'm embarrassed and ashamed to tell you that 10 years ago, I walked past your house and I saw an Israeli flag out and I ripped it off the door. And one of your children answered the door and I looked out and they were like calling out to me to give them back the flag. And I laughed. I laughed and mocked them. Well, I want you to know I woke up after October 7th and every morning... I have this gnawing feeling in my neshama. Many times I wanted to come by. I wanted to ask Mechila over the years. But now I feel like I must. And he begged Mechila, he begged forgiveness. Chas v'shalom. In my immaturity, I acted so fanatically and so outrageously. If I didn't agree with it, I should have walked by. But to bother another fellow Jew, to rip off the flag from his house, it's inexcusable. Well, Reb Judah was there together with his wife, and his newlywed daughter was sitting on the couch, and she says, I want you to know something. My husband's been off at war. Kimat haven't spent a day together since the war began. In the schus of this bakoshas mechila, the request of mechila, she started crying and she said, let it be a schus for my husband and for our siblings and their husbands that everybody should come back home safely. When we're united, there's nothing more beautiful to Hashem. And Hashem will no doubt keep us safe. Moving on to the next capital, Shia Malis. Hashem Hashem. Hashem the 134th parak of Tilim, the final one of the Shir Hamalis. It's what the Levim chanted, what they sang while standing on the 15th and highest step, right in front of the Azara. And 
We need to stop for a moment and put ourselves into the shoes of the Levium. Actually, they weren't wearing shoes because you don't wear shoes in the Beis HaMikdash. But stand in their place and look out over the majesty of the Beis HaMikdash and the beautiful sounds and the music and the singing. What a, what, what a scene. He made Baruch Hu Hashem kol avde Hashem ha'im dem beis Hashem ba'leilois. That's the capital that we just read. Behold, bless Hashem, all you servants of Hashem who stand in the house of Hashem in the nights. person has to realize that if we are eager and hoping to be servants of Hashem, we have to realize it doesn't start when you're standing at the top of the steps. It's a journey. You start at the first step and the second and the third and when you get to the 15th step, when you get to the pinnacle, look down and see how far you've come, how much you've grown, and realize it was that growth that brought you there. Rabbi Yaakov Meir Shechter, the great, I guess we would call him the Rebbe of Breslov today. Ahelik Yid is a man maybe 90 years old. He looks remarkably young, but he had a very, very, very difficult life. His wife was not well for many years emotionally. His children as well. He has many children that are not emotionally well. And until recently, and again, mamish recently, he would have, he had no elevator in his building. He would have to walk up all the steps. And one time somebody commented to him about the many steps that he had to walk up. And he said, Hanechemodin these are more precious to me than gold and fine, fine, purified gold. Poz is Gematria 87. And Rabbi Yaakov Meir Shechter told him, there are 87 steps that I walk up every day. And those 87 steps bring me to my door. I have such hakaras hatoiv to the steps of my building. Oh, yeah. Because the steps of my building are that which brings me to my home, to my mikdash ma'at, to my place of heavenly abode, my own personal place. We have to look as steps, not as things that are obstacles, not as the hindrances of our life, but they are the vehicle that allows us to continue to grow and that is the story of the Yishir Amalis. Every one of the steps that we've gone through, each one is a stepping stone to get to another height, another level, to get to where we need to go, to get to where we need to become. Until next time, Zagazant. <laughs>